Vega worried their song had attracted the storm's attention and made plans for the flock to leave the hollow. She locked herself away to study. The separation pained Agar. Like you know it does. Unable to bear the loneliness, Agar finally took to the sky. High above, the open air cradled him like star cloth ribbonettes. He felt peace in the deafening rush of wind across his feathers. Once he found them a new home, Riga would love him as he loved her. She would offer him the scepter their mother had crafted for him. The scepter that Riga selfishly kept. But as he approached the forest's edge, night fell and thunder shook his heart. Agar saw a great storm building on the horizon. Had he the scepter, he could have fought. Instead, he listened, straining through the thunder for the faint secondary beat of Riga's twin heart. Through lightning and chaos, he followed it home. Agar told Riga of the storm, the forest's edge and the gleaming bulbs of starlight clashing overhead. She didn't scold him or tell Mother Kestrel. She listened and heard the possibility in his tale. Gratitude. Imagine that. In another life, I'd have appointed Aldrin dominion of the Reef's borderlands to expand and connect the kingdom under my reign. Agar's scepter in hand. He would have used it to open doors and challenge foes best left alone. He was not unlike a guardian already, and he would have died before his time. Aldrin's fall was a predetermined point, so I hid the scepter away and gave him something safe to chase. He often strayed from that path.